Hey folks, welcome back to Green Joe Coffee Truck. My name is Vince and today I am answering questions on just general questions that I see from the forums and the Facebook groups. I'm trying to help some folks guide their way into coffee trucking. If you're new to my channel, I have six years experience with building coffee trucks and then operating coffee trucks, most importantly. At this point, what I do is help people grow their coffee truck business or coffee carts or trailers, whatever you're into. We're gonna just dive straight into the questions on this one. Hi y'all, I like that she started off with hi y'all. Uh, I'm new here and new to this business business owner with other businesses, uh, but this is a new venture uh, that we're considering. I'm wondering if you can help me with a few things so that we can weigh the viability of a mobile coffee business. Looks like this person has had some entrepreneur experience, but they're just getting started with the mobile business industry and they're looking at the viability of the mobile business industry. Okay. They start off with questions. So there's three questions to this one and they start off with question number one. At well-attended festivals, how many coffees would you expect to make over the course of a day and a half? Over the course of a day and a half a day. Okay, cool. So this is like a, a volume question is what we're getting at. What's interesting is they use the words well-attended and you go, well, you know, the first question is what's well-attended? Because I've learned that some events do better than others and that population density isn't always the best tool for determining profitability. And I'll give you an example. I've done, okay, so I've done a lot of CrossFit events and you know, it's a, it's a high competition event. Those guys want a lot of energy. So they hit the truck multiple times during the day. So I may only have like 300 people at the event not a very well attended event but because they're doing these heavy workouts and coming back to the truck constantly i i sell more i, I end up selling about three times the amount of what i would expect to sell just purely based on their their attendance numbers another one that is similar to that is renaissance fairs they tend to be older crowds and so with the older crowd a couple things happens i get hit in the morning when the vendors set up i get hit during the opening when people first get there. And then those events tend to run late at night. I get hit with the vendors again after the midday slump. I get hit with the crowd again after the midday slump. Both I'll get hit with the vendors and the crowd again before their uh, the dance. They usually have some kind of dance at night. People need to pick me up. So that crowd, I may only have a thousand people, 2000 people at that crowd, but because I see them multiple times throughout the day, uh, it raises my, my numbers significantly. So I'm gonna add that little piece to it, a little bit of context to that question so that whoever's watching this can kind of maybe make a better decision on how they're picking up their events. But going back uh, to the original question, how many cups do you expect to sell during a day? So I have an equation that I've used to help me forecast how much money and how much volume I'll see at different events. And it helps me kind of gauge on whether or not I need extra labor. Really, that's the tool I use it for. But it's pretty useful for you guys that are just getting into this business and you're trying to calculate like, how much money will I make? The equation runs like this. You will see 10% in ticket sales. Now that's important. Ticket sales is different than cup sales. You will see 10% in ticket sales of your total population of the event if, and these are the four things that I think need to happen. Number one, it's an early morning. Okay, 10 a.m. start times, you're not gonna sell as much coffee. Number two, it's a hard start time. People come wandering into festivals and fairs, they have a chance to stop in at their local coffee shop or Starbucks on the way. So it's gonna hurt your sales. Early start times that are hard start times, i.e. the 5K starts at 8 a.m. Good placement, and that one's absolutely key because I've been at the end of a race and have watched thousands of people not buy my coffee because they're already hyped up. They just went on a run. They don't need me anymore. So I think good placement is absolutely key. Typically it's the start of the race, next to registration tables or at the entrance. I like to be somewhere in between the main parking area and the main event closer to the main event because um, I found that if you're kind of too much in the middle, people will walk by you because they need to register still. So if I can be just beyond registration, to me that's perfect. They stop in, 
they get their registration, they do all their things, and then they look up, okay, what do I need to do? Oh, I'll go get a cup of coffee. That's where I want to be. So good visibility, good placement. You got to kind of think about the behavior of your patrons. Uh, no competition. And when I mean no competition, I mean no other hot beverage sold or given away. You have the volunteers get free coffee from Starbucks. Then what happens is all those volunteers are walking around with Starbucks coffee instead of advertising your coffee. Ultimately, that's going to hurt sales. You could have been boosting sales by having people advertise your cup. Having any type of competition is gonna cut your sales directly in half. So that's another form of the equation you have to keep in mind. All that being said, if you have 1,000 person 5K, okay, you got 1,000 people that are gonna show up to the 5K, then you can expect to have about 100 ticket sales. Now, ticket sales is different than cups of coffee because ticket sales, if you're smart about this, and we go over this, I go over this in my coffee cart ebook when I, when I talk about the building a business, and I go over this in the business plan, but I'll go over it again here. If your only sale is your latte or your cup of coffee, then you're probably gonna average about four bucks a ticket sale. And so on that 100 ticket sales from that 1,000 people at your 5K, you'll make about 400 bucks. But if you can add pastries, waters, and merchandise to your ticket, then you can really start boosting your, your average ticket sale. So let's say you add a muffin and you can get that muffin sold. That's gonna boost your average ticket above five. So now you're closer to six bucks. And let's say you can get a water in there. Maybe it's just a dollar water, but still it adds another 50 cents. Now you're at 650 and then you have cups, t-shirts, hats, uh, bags of coffee. All those will boost your ticket sale a little bit more. So let's say pushes it even a dollar or two. Now you're pushing closer to $8 an average ticket sale. So instead of doing $4 a ticket sale where you only made 400 bucks, now with the same amount of people, you're making closer to 800 bucks. So in this business, you gotta learn how to add up the pennies because they're gonna, they're gonna add up over time. We're a volume business and the pennies count in this business. So um, I think that's really important to kind of do is look at a little bit beyond just the cup of coffee and see what else you can add to the ticket. So 100 cups of coffee or 100 ticket sales is, is what you're gonna run if all, if you had 10% of the population, everything looked great. I'm gonna add in my two cents again here because this is the benefit of this video, right? Is talking to someone who's done this business before. So that's to say that you can handle 100 ticket sales because what you need to keep in mind is if that event starts at you know 8 a.m., it's got an 8 a.m. start time, then your sales are gonna be between seven and eight and you will see those 100 people in one hour. Now, if you don't have the infrastructure set up to handle that volume, then you're gonna lose sales. So 100 cups of coffee or 100 cups in one hour is just shy of two cups a minute. And so if you have a slow espresso machine or um, a point of sale service that sucks, or maybe your menu is just a bunch of words, there's no pictures, it's hard to order, like all those things are gonna add to your ticket times. And ultimately it's gonna slow down your assembly line, which is gonna mean less sales volume. There's a little bit more to be said than how many cups are gonna arrive at your window. It's also how many can your window put out. When I put out my equipment course, I have a course on my website that covers all the equipment. Workflow and cups per minute was my number one priority. Uh, whether or not I'm picking a 220 espresso machine or a 110 espresso machine, being able to put out large amounts of product is what's ultimately gonna make this event a successful event or not. A lot of that has to do with equipment. A lot of that has to do with barista training, which in the barista class, we cover that. I know I'm dropping a bunch of products and I'm sorry for that, but this is the reason that I, I build these courses out is to help people have successful businesses. You know, just keep that in mind when you're doing this research is you also have to be able to handle that volume. Question number two, is it easy or difficult to get accepted at various events? Well, I'll tell you this, the more prestigious and the more profitable, well, that's not always true, but the larger the event, better the event, usually the harder it is to get in. And that's because there's competition at good events, right? Expect to either pay in sponsorship or a percentage of sales for some of these larger events. They're gonna want a fee. Now, new events tend to be easier to get into, uh, but those can be hit or miss. And so I'm less likely to spend money on sponsorship for new events because a lot of times their projections are 
really just fabricated. So the bigger events with long history behind it, big populations, big numbers, um, those are typically going to have more competition as far as other coffee or beverage vendors, and you're going to have to fork up some cash to get into those events. A good example of that is uh, the football game that I did, Gilden Bowl. Yeah, that was my most profitable day. We did a little bit over 6k that day. I have a whole video on that. I'll put it as the first link in this uh, in the description so you can see how I did that event and I talk a lot about you know how I did well and how I screwed it up as well so you know hopefully you learn from my mistake okay so question number three is if run purely with staff is it profitable I'm gonna kind of rearrange that question and ask it in a different way the question I would ask is what events would be profitable if they had an excessive labor charge. So what events would you still make money if you had counted in the labor? And there's two things that I would say. One, an event that has volume. You need to move cups, you need to move tickets, you need to move product. And then the second one, which wasn't asked in any of these questions is catering, where you have a guaranteed paycheck because then you know exactly how much you're gonna make because you, you've you sold your 100 cups already. People have already asked for 100 cups of coffee. I did a quick search on keywords using Google Ads and I threw in the keywords coffee bar near me, coffee truck near me, coffee catering near me, coffee cart near me, coffee trailer near me. These are all these questions that people would ask if they're looking for coffee catering. And you can see here just for the Albuquerque region, I have an average of 2,900 monthly searches for coffee bar near me. For coffee truck, I have 1,300. Coffee catering near me is close to 400. So all these are potential leads for a coffee catering gig. And I noticed that the author of these questions did not consider that aspect or was not tailoring their questions towards that aspect of that business. And I think that's to look back on how I approached this business, it was it was my number one underestimated source of profit. I didn't see that one coming. I made quite a living on doing just coffee catering. I had indoor coffee carts, I had coffee trailers, I had coffee trucks. I mean, there was a whole fleet at one point um, where we would send out multiple baristas at once. And that allowed me to be able to kind of sit back and manage. I have some other videos where I kind of talk about that, how I would send multiple baristas. I think one Mother's Day, we made 1600 bucks and I didn't work at all. You can definitely sit back and, and manage, so to speak. I'd be very weary on hiring a manager and expecting them to run it the way you would. That's just something I haven't found to be a realistic expectation in any business that I've run. I think you can very easily delegate a lot of these catering gigs to experienced baristas. So that's something I would definitely consider. Folks, I hope this has been helpful. My name is Vincent. I'm with Green Joe Coffee. If you haven't visited my website, I sell ebooks, courses, crash courses, business plans, all that stuff for getting started in the mobile coffee industry. I uh, hope to see you over there. Let me know if it's uh, useful and if you have any questions, throw them in the comment section. Thanks so much.